right now on VFN TV. Why are millennials socialists? What's happening with socialism in America and the world? We're gonna take a look at what it really is. We're gonna look at college debt and how it needs to be done away with and why it's there. We're gonna look at Venezuela, Brazil, and so much more right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Can you believe that? Think about this. Why are so many millennials socialists? What's their thinking? Social? They're living in a democracy and a republic, but they're thinking socialism. And it's actually democracy and a republic that brought them the college, their home, their success, the wealth, and all the things that are happening. What are the universities teaching our children? What are schools teaching our children? Because that's that would be the millennials. I'm Greg Lancaster, and joining me is John Ramos. Hello. Man, this is amazing. When you think about, you know, you know the, the question, I think Emily, is it Exxon, Ekins? Ekins, she's from the Cato yeah. Institute, and uh -huh, she's okay. being interviewed on Blaze TV, mm -hmm. and she begins to break down and share Listen, the reason why these guys are so much into socialism is because they have a different picture, not an accurate picture. In fact, listen to Emily as she kind of breaks it all down for us. And another thing, though, is that Scandinavia actually isn't socialist. And that's what's so funny is that young people today don't know what the word means. They don't know what it meant during the Cold War. They don't know <laughs> what the technical definition is. And so for them, they think of socialism as just being, you know, Scandinavia, which is a, you know, a much bigger uh, social welfare state. That's right. Um, it, it's something, it, it's interesting because Tea Party supporters are actually the most likely group to be able to accurately define uh, socialism when asked to. So, for instance, um, the, the, the actual definition of socialism is something like government ownership of the means of production. So, if you if you gave some kind of some some kind of definition like that, then you were counted as having defined it accurately according to a CBS New York Times poll. And 57% of Tea Party supporters could answer that correctly. Only 16% of millennials could, and only about, uh, if I remember correctly, about 20% of, of Democrats could say could define it correctly. So, for whatever reason, Republicans um, have a better understanding as to what socialism is. That's so important to understand that, you know, uh, that they, they have, the Scandinavian countries have a, a, a democracy, but they have a big heart in regards to democracy and a big, you know, welfare, being able to help people out, which is we great. Do, we, do, we do too. Actually we bigger because we're actually, <laughs> we you, you can bet about those countries in one of our states, you know, you compare the, the population. The biggest, like, the biggest laugh is like, oh, they're so generous. <laughs> the United States is the most generous country in the world. Well, that's so important to understand, John. When you think about this, that America, they always compare us to other countries, <laughs> but America's 350 million folks. Canada is, is 38 million, just 38 yeah. million. Yeah. That's the population of California, right? 35 million. 35 million. So you can't compare Canada because you have to provide this stuff for 350 million folks. That's a lot it's of a folks. a lot of a lot of people. But the economy does that. But we get a look at it because people are talking socialism, but they don't know what the definition is. We can see why they took away the definition of life. And really, it's, it's, yeah. it's economy, right? It's really what we're talking yeah. about. And so let's take a look at this, John. That's uh, the definition of socialism. Read this to us. According to... Uh, Merriam-Webster. Merriam-Webster, okay. Any of various economic and political theories advocating collective or governmental ownership and administration of the means of production and distribution of goods. Before you go to the next slide, look at this. It says, go back to, it says, government ownership of your company. Yeah. People who don't own companies want the government to own your company. Yeah. Production yeah. and administrative. So they're, they're gonna produce yes. it and, and they're gonna- Administrate yeah. it. <laughs> They're Pass gonna say, it out. This Give is it how out. How many cookies you need to make? This is right. how many burgers you need to make. Well, and this is what we're going to give you. You're going to get two cookies today. Or right, three cookies, right, right. These benefits. Right, exactly. It's good. And the rest of it? Okay. A system of society or group living in which there is no private property. China. Yeah, China. <laughs> I think about China that, you know, yeah. some of the people in the church in China that, you know, that you have a covert church that's there because the government is an atheistic communist government. They're over the church. Yeah, they're over the it's church. A government the church. CC, 3C church, whatever yeah. they call it. So the, the, uh, the, the, I would say the real church, but, but most of the church is the largest part of the church in the world, I believe, there in India, is um, undercover. So when they find out the church China. is meeting in a house in China, they push they take a bulldozer and just push the house over. If they have a business that you've been doing business in for the last 
400 years in your family, you know, China. Yeah. They can push that over because they own the land. They own the land, no ownership of land. And so when you have people like, uh, uh, what's the three letter uh, Brooklyn Congresswoman that's talking AOC. about? AOC. You know, AOC that stands for? Um, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. Yeah, yeah she's, I mean, she's, you know, it's just totally opposite. She has no knowledge of, of America. <laughs> she's not informed and things she's saying, um, it's just, it's, it just has, doesn't fit in America. But she can go to China and she would fit right in, but they wouldn't even let her yeah. talk there well, in China. Well, it's a per perfect case in point because even as she was talking, she said she's a socialist and she was into the Green Deal yeah. and many people were rallying behind her. The Green Deal is an excellent thing. But when they actually took it to the Senate floor to actually vote for it, 57 opposed it. 47 decided to vote present, and zero said yay, yes. But these are presidential <laughs> candidates, candidates that are running for the Democratic uh, DNC head of the party to compete against whoever or President Trump is going to be in the election. Right. And they're, they're going so far left, they're left of the left. Even yeah. the people that were left don't even claim that left but anymore. But it's even rhetoric. It's not even reality yes. because they were just talking like they were with her. But when it came to vote, they, they, don't, they don't even believe it themselves. 100% John, who said they were for it, yeah. didn't vote for it when Mitch McConnell brought it up for exactly. a vote in the Senate. And that's why these millennials yeah. are confused. They're being duped. They're being yeah. lied to. They're seeing politicians say one thing, but in reality, they're not even voting for the very thing that they said they're supporting. Speaking of lies, you know, now this particular investigation has come out and Mueller has... has uh, delusion collusion is delusion, what Delusion collusion. There was no evidence of collusion, a crime for the president with Russia and all that. But the, the ratings of all these uh, news broadcast stations, such as CNN, the reports are allegedly... And MSNBC. They've allegedly. dropped by... What was the thing I... Statistic? It's 40%, they, Their think. audience dropped by 40%. Some reports said allegedly. allegedly. And 24 hours of their program, all 24 hours... Not any of them are over a million viewers. They've lost their viewership. Why? Because they lied to the people yeah. for so long. And that's why it's so important. It's why we do what we do at VFN Absolutely. TV and VFN Kingdom Business is that somebody's got to say the truth. And not only are we talking truth, that you can always go uh, wherever you're watching us. You can look below. There's always references to references. what we're saying, sources of where we got it from. When you see a book like I Will Fight, you know, my book, for example, right here, it has page after page of footnotes to let you know where you can that information came from, That's you know right. what I'm saying? So you would know where to actually get it from. And you need to always look. If the book doesn't have any references or sources <laughs> to it, don't even read it because right. it's somebody trying to change your mind like what's taking place. So now we have students that have went into the education system because a lot of their parents said, you got to get a degree. If you got to get, get a degree. degree. You got to get a That's degree. That's how it works. Get a and degree. now they went to get the degree. They have this huge student debt because the first thing that happens outside of Planned Parenthood talking to you on the <laughs> campus is, hey, you can get a loan, low That's interest right. loan, and, you know, it's no problem at all. You tell me who's not going to sign up for a loan when your frontal lobe's not fully developed yet. Yeah, right. That you don't have to qualify for, no right. income's guaranteed, yes. and all you have to do is sign for it? Right. These students right. are leaving with twenty, thirty, forty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars in debt that they have to pay for. I believe six months after they graduate. It's not like yeah. when you get a chance. And you know. they sell you credit cards and oh, visas yeah. and MasterCard. Oh, twenty-two and twenty-five percent. Well, we get back from the break. We're going to go firsthand. We're, we're going to hear how students are talking about how their, their tuition is overcharging them. And listen, we want to comment below. Write to us at friendsofvfnkb.com. Yes. We want to hear. You can have student debt. I don't. You could be out of college for thirty years and you still can have student yes, debt. Yes, you can. You could be going to your grave after a long, extended life and still have student debt. Yes, it's just you like can. something that lingers it doesn't on. Go <laughs> Which means the universities are sucking people dry. It's not just universities, because I tell you what, there's a lot of people you can owe, but you can never, never not pay the government. <laughs> you got to pay that money back. I thought it was loans. a free country. Oh, no. Okay. That, that loan <laughs> that loan's from Sally Mae. She wants her money back. <laughs> Listen, we got to go to break. When we get back, you're going to see firsthand how, how the students want to, to literally uh, deal with the uh the, the tuition, right? Yes. And how to how to respond to it. They want just debt forgiveness, debt, right? They, they want free college and, and they want a job, at fi guaranteed job at $15, $15 an hour. Oh my goodness. Join us after the break. We'll be right back. I want to talk to you about our book. My book is out and it's ready for you right now. I will fight 10 strategies to fight for your success. Listen, so many people in the world understand if you're going to be successful, you got to fight for it. And many people who are believers and Christians think that just success falls out of the sky. 
But God has created the earth to respond to your labor. He's created the universe to respond to you believing in faith in what He's going to do. So I share in this book very specifically about biblically, biblical fights that have happened, but also got 10 uh, specific uh, strategies to be able to help you. I don't care if you're a CEO. I don't care if you're a congressperson or a senator. I don't care if you're a janitor, a business owner, a teacher, a pastor. If anybody knows needs to know how to fight, pastors need to know how to fight for success and, and define you know, what success is. But I talk specifically, and I begin in this book, is about uh, how God spoke to me and why am I writing the book? God showed me specifically in a dream, a pro prophetic dream, several dreams, but one was that he has a wealth transfer coming and he wants to deliver wealth to his people but they don't have the character and the integrity to be able to, to manage that wealth. He's, he's told, he told me that he's been getting a lot of money and wealth to them, but it goes right through their fingers like holes in a bowl. So they have to learn how to be able to develop strategies, biblical strategies to be able to position, be positioned. Why? Because a great harvest of souls is coming and it's gonna take many, many dollars to be able to bring in that harvest. And it's gonna be God's people who will fund that. And so he's looking for people that are, are willing to say, I want to be positioned. This is all about being positioned for great wealth. And it's not necessarily great wealth and money. It could be great wealth and influence, whatever God has entrusted you with. So get your, it's a free book. You just cover shipping and handling. We want to send it to you for free. And uh, you can go to vfnkb.com for all the details. You can see it on your screen. But listen, it's here. It's right here for you. Wonderful thing. I'm a, how many nuggets? I'm a, maybe uh 500, 600 yeah. <laughs> wisdom nuggets in addition to the success strategies. It's yours now, vfnkb.com. Did you know that Jesus himself said, apart from abiding in him, that we can accomplish nothing? So many people want to be able to do that, but you know what? They don't have a plan to do it. We put together a simple plan for you, and it's at iabide.org. It's iabide.org. Go there and request your plan today. It is amazing how your life will change when you begin to spend time with him who created the universe. He's been desiring that you would do that. It's at iabide.org. Request your simple plan today. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. Welcome, welcome back. Students are wanting $15 an hour, right? John, take us there. And $15 an hour, by the way, is thirty thousand dollars a year i love how people just throw that money out right, you know right. it's 30 grand well neil cavuto is uh interviewing this student uh, they're having a, a million student march i believe mm -hmm. to demand these rights because they want free college student debt cons uh, cancellation and minimum wage is Watch that it that, is that that's all okay well thirty thousand dollars <laughs> let's go there now let's go there uh so what do you totally want here? what do you want um, well, so the movement, the Million Student March, um, is a movement for a more um, equitable and fair system of education, as opposed to um, the really corporate model that we have right now. Uh, so the three core demands of the National Day of Action are free public college, a cancellation of student debt, and a $15 an hour minimum wage um, for people who work on the campus. And how's that going to be paid? Um, great question. Uh, I mean, you know, so. I'm not sure if you're talking on like a national level or at particular schools. I can sort of touch on both. Um, at well, my if you wanted all that stuff, University, someone asked to pick up the tab. Who would that be? Um, the 1% of people in society that are hoarding um, the wealth and really sort of causing um, a catastrophe that students are facing. I mean, we have a, a relationship right now where 1% of the population owns more wealth than the 99% combined. Right. It was interesting that she didn't know where the money was going to come from. After four years of college, this possibly? is a shame because somebody somebody years? told this young girl this, <laughs> right. and she believed it, and she's on national television <laughs> right. saying this stuff, and it's not true. I believe I believe but, the students, the young, the, the people in their twenties and thirties are going to be so angry at the so universities I so. because it's it's like if you if you get sold a product well, that, and well, they don't <laughs> deliver on the product, they should be liable for not Absolutely. giving them an education. For not giving them an education that allowed them to get get a, get a job. Listen, I, I don't you think the yes. class action suit? And they should take that up. Listen, I I, I was a part of that. I, I worked for in a season helping students go to school and pick their careers. And and some of these students, they want to take these courses that are not going to result in them getting an actual real job when they graduate. Like, do you realize you're going to be taking on a mountain of debt. Yes, I do. And it just doesn't compute. Right. But it doesn't compute because they're banking on somebody else paying for it. And what this young lady didn't realize is that 
she's actually part of the one percent when you base that one percent around the world's World, yes, wealth. Yes. She is the one percent. She's the one percent. <laughs> And you think about it, I mean, write to us below, comment, comment below, write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. We want to be able to hear from you. But we were thinking about this, that I really believe that, that, that uh, uh, I mean, a, a four-year study in, in, in gender studies is not mm. going to get you a job yeah. at a major industry. They're like, what yeah. did you study? It's like, well, there's only two. There ain't only two. Anyway, so, <laughs> so what did Dr. Thomas Sowell talk Dr. about here? Because we've got to look at what socialism is. Yes, right? he's an economist, uh, mm. brilliant man. He's being brilliant. Indie. Being interviewed, I believe he even worked for uh, President uh, Reagan. Reagan, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, and just has written a lot of great books on the economy. He was a Marxist before. I think he even believed in communism, and just by the facts, the facts, the right. facts, he said, right. he "Can't believe in this stuff anymore." Right. So it's okay to start that way. It matters where you end. But he's being asked about what these politicians, and one particular politician, Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders, has said and is continuing to say about socialism and why millennials are buying into this, you know, agenda. What he has to say about socialism, take a look. I'm hoping to use this conversation to apply the lessons of wealth, poverty, and politics to the current American scene mm. and have you tell me what to think about certain statements and certain, well, you'll get the idea. Here's mm. a quotation from Bernie Sanders, the Vermont <laughs> senator who nearly won the Democratic presidential nomination. Quote, Quoting Bernie Sanders, while there are some great corporations, this is the question of causation versus blame, while there are some great corporations trying to do the right thing, in my view, and I say this very seriously, the greed of the billionaire class, <laughs> the, the greed, this is not supposed to be funny, he just, I say this very seriously, the greed of the billionaire class, the greed of Wall Street is destroying the lives of millions of Americans, close quote. What do we make of that? Uh, uh, it, it's astonishing, but I think even more astonishing is how many people voted for Bernie Sanders at a time where uh, in socialist Venezuela, people are starving. They're breaking into stores in, a, in their desperation to get some food. They're crossing the borders into the other countries to, to stave off starvation. In a country that, ha that has, all, has uh, one of the world's largest supplies of oil, that they've managed to do that in that country. And people are so utterly insulated from facts that the fact that uh, Bernie Sanders uh, paints a very beautiful picture is all that matters. He's not, he's, Bernie's just not being honest because he's, he's an intelligent man, but his whole life, I believe some of the, the reports are allegedly that he, in the beginning of his life, he was living in a communal situation, you know, that stuff mm. from the 60s and all. Yeah. But you think about this, we have people writing us from Venezuela saying, pray for us. They're saying, this is what they tell us in Venezuela, that if we speak our mind, we risk imprisonment for 20 years. The police come on, this is what they told us, that if, you, if, you, if the police come on the bus, when we have the bus, they can steal your money, they can rape you, they can do all these things to you, and you can't say anything about it. They just, you know, but, I mean, it's, a, it's crazy. Why would anybody in today see what, what socialism will do? Well, just take a look at Brazil. This is Brazil, uh, somebody from Brazil talking about how socialism ruined their country. And by the way, they're turning around. But let's just look what happened to Brazil before their, pre their current president got into office. Let's take a look. Many American millennials seem to be drawn to socialism. They came out in big numbers for Bernie Sanders in the 2016 presidential primaries. They rail against capitalism on their college campuses. They wear Che Guevara t-shirts to signal their socialist virtue. I know a lot about socialism. I live in Rio de Janeiro, and I work throughout Brazil as a journalist for a popular magazine. In the early 2000s, Brazil's economy was growing rapidly. The government had enacted economic and monetary reforms and invested holdings in some state-run companies, giving the private sector more room to breathe. Inflation, a chronic problem in Brazil, was dramatically reduced. Foreign investors poured into the country, eager to catch a portion of our expanding economy. The future seemed promising. But today, our economy is in shambles, unemployment and debt are massive, and powerful politicians are being investigated for involvement in the largest scandals of fraud and corruption in the country's history. What happened? In 2002, a socialist politician named Lula da Silva ran for the presidency. He was a socialist, but painted himself as a modern, cool kind of socialist. He would be the politician who would heal 
national divisions and unite everyone. He even had a nickname, Lulinha Paz e Amor, which means Little Lula Peace and Love in Portuguese. But the old message about the need for income redistribution to decrease inequality was still there. The media, academic elite and celebrities assured Brazilians that by transferring the money from the rich to the poor, the poor could finally be richer. But the only ones who really got rich were Lula and his corporate and political friends. It only got worse under his successor, Dilma Rousseff. The socialists increased government spending, deficits and debt. They called it a stimulus. They increased the minimum wage and the benefits of social programs. They call it social justice. They increased the salaries and retirement benefits of the civil service. They called it investing in the future. They handed out thousands of jobs in the government and state-owned companies as favors to their political allies. And they called it good governance. It worked for a while. Socialism always works at the beginning. But government spending just kept going up and then Lula's socialist paradise fell apart and the economy fell with it. The outcome? From 2008 to 2015, government spending grew nearly four times as fast as tax revenue. The economy shrank 3.8% in 2015, the worst result in 25 years. That same year, a World Bank survey found Brazil's economy to be one of the world's worst. Out of 189 countries, we were the 16th hardest place to open a business, the 60th most difficult nation in which to register property, and the 12th most complex place to pay taxes. Economically and morally, the almost 15 years of socialist policies have greatly harmed Brazil. We also remain among the world's leaders in murder and robbery, and we rank near the bottom of industrialized nations in terms of education and healthcare. Americans take it for granted that they can be born into the lower class and reach the middle or even upper class. Many Brazilians take it for granted that they can't. But finally, some things are starting to change. There may be reason for hope. Today, more and more Brazilians see that capitalism and limited government are the only way forward. Thankfully for Brazil, Lula has been charged in several lawsuits for corruption, involvement in a criminal organization, influence peddling, money laundering, and obstruction of justice. Rousseff was impeached in 2016 for falsifying the government's finances and illegally using money from state-owned banks to run the government. This crisis prompted the new government to freeze federal spending, reduce the government's role in state-owned companies, and to encourage some of the massive federal workforce to resign. No one knows whether these basic measures will be enough to rescue Brazil economically. Truthfully, the damage has been so extensive it may take decades for the country to recover. But if we do, it won't be socialism that saves us. American millennials, take note. I am Felipe Moura Brasil for Prager University. Think about all these students who are embracing, these professors who are teaching these students to embrace socialism and selling them on this lie had destroyed Brazil, this huge country. Well, we want to hear from you. Comment below, write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. We are hearing from you, Venezuela. We're hearing from you, Brazil. We know that you're speaking truth because you've experienced the great loss. So good news for Brazil. Even though it was a major crisis, somebody came in and wished them peace and love and transference of wealth and it destroyed their nation. Well, they have a new president now, President Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro. And they call him the Trump of Brazil. <laughs> and you know how President Trump, when he got into office, that you know, he embraced America, all of America, but he also embraced you know, the, the Christian America, they said, come in and pray for me. Yeah, the pastors yeah. come in and pray for him. And he said he wanted to be known as the, the one president was the most praying, praying president, president by the time he gets out of office. And you pray to the Lord, Lord will answer. I mean, That's Lord right. is just looking for us to humble ourselves and say, we need help. And when you're praying, no matter what people say of you, if you're talking to God and you're looking, you're sincerely looking for help, he responds. Well, President Bolsonaro came to America to, to visit with Trump. As a matter of fact, they have a, we have a picture of him visiting with Trump in the Oval Office here. He's giving him a jersey. They exchange oh, jerseys, soccer jerseys, yeah. Oh, oh cool. And so uh, the President Bolsonaro gave him, gave him a jersey. But it, it, it matters who your leaders are. It, yes. it really matters because as you see, the United States leads all over the world. Whatever we do first, other nations typically follow. And here you have the President from Brazil asking Christian leaders to pray for him. 
Think yes. about it. Yeah, he did. For. When he came here, that's what he said. He wanted to make sure that he gets after, meets with the president before. He wanted to make sure that, that Christian pastors would come and lay hands on him and pray for him because they're coming out of what, 15, 16, 15 years. 15 years of being under what Venezuela is under for a a um, short period of time, sure. but seven years or so, I guess it and is. And it's interesting what they say is that socialism works in the beginning, you yes. know, in the beginning. But then after a while, it yeah. falls apart. Well, and Margaret Thatcher yeah, said yeah. that, you know, socialism is good until you run out of other people's money, you know. And that's the thing is, is that it's just a, people, it's, it's based on greed and it's based on envy. The whole thing, every policy, you know, it's all the promotions, all the political statements. It's all about getting people to envy what other people have and say, that's my stuff. And, and it's, and that's it's an our, entitlement. I deserve that. So well, I know give the, it to me. One particular man talked about studying, you know, uh, the fall of Russia and what happened and they went into communism. He says that communism is the biggest temptation to a man's flesh. Mm. Socialism, socialism is the biggest temptation to a person's flesh because your flesh is going, I don't want to work. Well, think about this. This is the American dream. The American dream is that you can work, you can learn hard and study actually what you're going to be doing in school so you can go do it, uh, but work hard. And, 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 and you can know some people as well. And for example, let's say sports. You know, you work hard, you learn how to play ball, you learn how to do the different things you need to do is to be sports, you know, you know somebody and they get you this person, that person refers you. Next thing you know, you work in this league and that league. And one day, they get you out there to be able to play with the National Football League. But you know what? When you get on the field, you still have to play, play the ball. Game. <laughs> if you're a quarterback, you got to run, you got to pass. If you're, if you're a receiver, you still have to receive and that's what socialism, socialism is saying. We can get you on the field and you don't even have to play. It's a lie. You might not have to play for a month or two, but eventually as your whole nation falls that embraces it, and every nation that has embraced it has always fallen every single time. Listen, I want to pray with you before you go. Comment below. Write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. Father God, I thank you for our audience. I bless them right now. Encourage them, Lord. Help them to just look within and look up and understand that with God, all things are possible. We can be the republic that you've called us to be. And dear God, we ask you, Lord, end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray in Jesus' name. And don't forget how easy it is. Love God, love others, and lead others to do the same. God bless. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Listen, together we can touch the world. That's right. Subscribe below, right? Wait, 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 wait. Don't go away. Subscribe. We're going to touch the world. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Hey, be sure to check us out at vfnkb.com and also join the VFNKB community at vfnkbcommunity.com. Listen, your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success.